Charlie Jordan. I'm going to talk about the uh, impact of the Harry K. Thaw crime of the century and how it came to Colebrook, New Hampshire. It was a little over 100 years ago that uh, Harry K. Thaw found his way into the headlines of really the nation. Harry K. Thaw was a uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania playboy, young guy, okay, and he uh, fell in love with a showgirl, Evelyn Nesbitt, and she was just out of her teens at that point. Evelyn had a very colorful past. She had dated many, many of the high rollers in Manhattan. And one of her uh, previous love affairs was with Stanford White. Now, Stanford White was the leading architect, actually, in the country. He had designed uh, West Point and a number of different uh, prominent buildings. And uh, he uh, had fallen in love with this young girl, but the problem with Stanford White was he was married. Harry K. Thaw married Evelyn Nesbitt, found out about this previous love affair. Well, here they are at a dinner club in 1906 in Manhattan. And uh, by just luck, they all found themselves in the same airspace. The top of Madison Square Garden it was a plush restaurant there. And Evelyn started talking about Stanford got the young Harry K. Thaw a little upset. As they were leaving for the door, he said, I have something to do. He went over and shot him three times, right there, point blank. It was an incredible crime. Celebrated characters, this famous showgirl, and now what, okay? What happened next was, really, we talked about the O.J. Simpson trial or whatever. This was definitely the initial trial of the century, the Thaw, Stanford White, Evelyn Nesbitt trial. The public feeling was that Harry was standing up for his wife, you know, and he did the right thing because actually when he shot Stanford, he said, you deserve this, that what you did, you ruined my wife. In the end, the courts found Harry innocent by reason of insanity. He was now uh, committed to a, uh, an asylum in New York State. Now fast forward to 1913. Somehow, Harry escapes and he makes for the border. So somehow he found his way into the nearby city of Aquatica, Quebec. And he was discovered to be there. The Canadians didn't quite know what to do with this guy. A very dapper guy, he's now out on the street and so he's kind of treated somewhat like a celebrity. They're aware of his, his fame. They escort him to the border, to Norton, Vermont, and literally push him over. You're on your own. It's not our problem. Harry somehow gets a hold of a limousine and is driving around the back roads of our region here. And a sheriff um, finds him, picks him up, realizes from the previous press accounts who this guy is and brings him to Colebrook. But the first thing he does when he gets to Colebrook is he goes to the best barber in town and has a complete shave. Leaves a hundred dollar tip. How he got the money is as much a mystery as how he got out of this asylum, okay? The media is clamoring. There had been phone lines set up in Colebrook just to deal with all the New York press that wanted to know about this in, in 1913. You found Harry K. Thaw. Eventually, he's sent back to New York. A new trial. Harry is no longer insane. He's set free. A, a great footnote. One interesting point, though, is he did return to Colebrook once. He came three years after he turned up on our streets. Um, Sheriff Drew passed away. And Harry drove up in a limousine, uh, got out, attended his funeral, and left. And that's the story of Harry K. Thaw.